The old Club World Business Class from British Airways might be one of the most underrated business class products out there. Now, there are some very valid criticisms that I'm going to be covering in this video, but there are also a lot of great features that I find are often overlooked or undervalued in other flight reviews I've seen, especially when travelling as a couple or on board an A380. I'm going to be covering all of that and more as I take you through our overnight journey from Miami to London Heathrow. We arrived into Miami on a connecting short-haul business class flight with American Airlines. And although the flight had a lengthy delay, we still had quite a few hours before our departure to Heathrow, which afforded us plenty of time to check out the lounge. BA doesn't have its own lounge in Miami, but business class and status passengers can access the American Airlines flagship lounge. On our arrival, we were welcomed with a glass of Piper Heitzig champagne and went to find a seat to enjoy this. And this was a really nice way to start the lounge experience. The lounge is a large space with plenty of different sections and a variety of different seating options including places where you can have a lie down. Most of the chairs also had tables next to them and there were plenty of charging options as well. And after polishing off that first glass of fizz, decided to have a wander around at the other drinks options available. There's plenty of free pour spirits, champagne, beer, wine, loads of soft drink options as well, including the Coke Freestyle machine and a coffee machine. And there was also a section for tea as well. I made good use of the free pour spirits as well as the Coke Freestyle machine to make myself a rum with a diet cherry coke. After which I decided to explore the food options in the lounge. There was a main hot food buffet area which had a pretty decent selection, nothing too fancy but I managed to get some chicken and carrots. The best part by far though was the cooking station which had beef wellington. Not much available in terms of desserts aside from a few sweets. After a very pleasant and relaxing few hours in the lounge it was finally time to go find our boarding gate. You have to take a quick tram ride over from where the American Airlines lounge is to where the BA gates are. And once we went down this escalator into the main gate area, we found an incredibly crowded area. It's not the most organised boarding gate, and I wouldn't usually comment on this, but this is the second time we've flown out of Miami with BA and had the same experience. But eventually, after a lot of people were called up to the gate to have documents checked, they finally started the boarding. And we were very excited to head up the ramp onto the upper deck of the A380. For today's flight, we'd select the seats on the upper deck in 53A and C. Being at the bulkhead means you have direct aisle access if you're in the window seat, and you also get the storage bins at the window. Today I sat in the aisle whilst Kelly took the window, and I'll give you a quick tour of the seat now. As you can see, plenty of leg room, but not much privacy in the aisle, you are quite exposed to everyone else. And obviously this seat setup could be a bit awkward if you didn't know the person opposite you. You have a controller, so the entertainment system to your left, and the controls for the seat, down here. The tray table drops out by clicking this button, it can be a bit stiff sometimes on the older planes, this can slide towards you and away from you, and it folds out into a full size tray table for later. It's a decent sized tray table, not always the sturdiest when it's folded out though. Worth noting as well, there were no individual air vents above the seat. In terms of charging, there was a USB port to the left just underneath the remote. And then down by your feet, there's another power outlet as well as another USB. Bit of an awkward location this one, but you can put things on charge and then chuck them in the drawer, which I'll show you in a bit. You get an individual reading light over your shoulder, and that can be adjusted in brightness. And now we come to the only storage that you get if you're in an aisle seat. So that is this little tray here. So you can see I've put my bottle of water and my amenity kit. Those came in that tray and I've also added a tablet. Not too much room for anything else in those. Uh, in contrast, if you buy the window, on the A380 upper deck, you get these big storage bins. The lack of decent storage space is definitely one of the biggest issues with BA's old club world, especially when the bed is in live flat mode and you can't actually access that little drawer that you have. But this window seat on the A380 really does negate a lot of those issues. You've got the um, st big storage bins there we can get absolute loads in. And then also when those storage bins aren't in use, you can close the lids and use them as a tray. So it's just somewhere extra where you can put a drink on when you've got the meal service going, or if you don't want your tray table down, it's just somewhere else to be able to put things. Back in my own seat now and the pre-departure fizz had arrived. And I think this right here demonstrates probably the biggest benefit and also disadvantage of this seat. A lot of the criticisms I see of the product are the awkwardness that's caused by facing the person next to you, but if you are actually travelling as a couple, it's actually a really great seat layout, you can see each other really clearly, and it's a really nice sociable layout. The entertainment screen folds out like this, and it was quite an old dated screen to be honest. And because of the way it folds out, you can't use this during takeoff and landing, which is a bit of a shame. 
One thing I do really like though is that the screen can be tilted. So if you're reclined a bit, you can get this to tilt down so you're looking directly at it, which is something that you can't do on the new club suite entertainment screens. As mentioned though, it was an incredibly old screen and really, really unresponsive. I was tapping away at it, nothing was happening. Um, every now and then it would register a tap that you're doing, but for the most part, it just was really, really poor and I ended up having to use the remote next to me as much as possible. Kelly had it worse though, hers got stuck on this entertainment pause for announcement screen and it wouldn't go off there. I think it did eventually go off um, at some point during the flight, but for the start it just wasn't working at all. And just on the subject of entertainment, Wi-Fi was available at a cost. Whilst we were getting comfortable and enjoying the champagne, the cabin crew came round with the menus. There was a good selection of cocktails, spirits and other drinks available. And I thought the dinner menu was looking really good with options of beef fillets and salmon. As this was an overnight flight, I was kind of tempted to just get straight to sleep, but when I saw the menu, I thought I have to try that. So I went ahead and placed my order for the beef fillet. BA's amenity kits come from the White Company, and it's a good little selection, particularly for an overnight flight. You've got your socks, your eye mask, toothbrush, toothpaste, a few things from the White Company, such as moisturizer, lip balm, and a pulse point thing, which I'm not entirely sure what that's meant to do, uh, and of course some earplugs, so all set up for a good night's sleep. The only slight issue with these matey kits is we did find them a little tricky to open and actually ended up breaking the zip, getting them out. And some decent headphones are provided too. Okay people, as this way. And as we started taxiing towards the runway, tonight. the safety demonstration was played. I think I prefer the old one to be honest, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And as we're taking off, let's have a quick talk about the cost of today's flight. So originally we were booked on a premium economy flight on the way home. This was all booked as part of a big Bay Holidays trip that involved multiple different flights and multiple different hotels in a few different destinations. And in the run up to the holiday, a couple of months out, we decided to call up and just get a quote on upgrading the return leg. Now normally we'd only really do business class if we were paying with points, but we actually got a pretty good quote for this. It was around £750 um, each for to fly back. So Obviously it's not cheap, but it was pretty reasonable for an overnight flight uh, where we get a lot more comfort. And that price also upgraded both our flight from uh, Puerto Rico to Miami, so that American Airlines business class flight that we started with, and it also upgrades the ongoing connection that we have after this flight going from Heathrow to Newcastle. Upgrading also meant that we earned a lot more tier points for this trip, especially when you factor in the BA Holidays double tier points promotion. Once up in the air, I made myself comfortable by pulling down the footrest and adjusting that to the height that I wanted. It's not fully adjustable or anything, but there are two different height settings that can be adjusted by pulling that forward. There we go, that's much better. And shortly after, the cabin crew started the onboard service, starting with handing out hot towels and then bringing around the drinks. We'd actually placed our orders before takeoff, so we were straight out with these. I opted for the Johnny Ginger and Kelly grabbed the Cranberry Blush. A big fan of the Johnny Ginger, definitely become my go-to drink when flying with BA. The food service started pretty quickly and I was given my soup just as turbulence started to kick in. You can really see just how much my drinks and the soup were also shaking around. Definitely made it a bit difficult and made me drink my drink a lot faster. They then brought out the beef fillet which looks absolutely hideous, um, but actually tasted really nice. You wouldn't think it from looking at the video though, would you? and the dessert was absolutely delicious as well. The cabin crew followed up the meal with another drink service and I decided to go for a Bailey's and hot chocolate for a nightcap, and then decided to check out the bathroom. As we're on the A380, it's a nice big space. Uh, there's no fancy Emirates showers or anything on board, but it is nice just having that extra space in the bathroom. Um, and BA do offer some nice white company amenities um, with some soap in there as well. And after a quick freshen up, it was time to get things ready for bed. We put up the privacy divider to make things a bit more private for Kelly, and then I got my bedding set up. You get this mattress protector, which is fairly useless to be honest, but you then get a nice sheet and the pillow is really good as well. And you can see just how brilliant and private it is at these window seats. It is really nice and it's really spacious as well. Obviously the new club suites offer great privacy for everyone, but they are quite close in around the feet and I really do like the space that you get with the older seat. And I actually managed a pretty decent five hour sleep before woken up to breakfast. I went for this wrap, which was surprisingly good. You don't tend to expect much from the breakfasts on these flights, but this was actually a fairly tasty one for once. Um, I wasn't all that hungry, but uh, I did have a bit of it. 
After breakfast, I went into the bathroom to freshen up a bit, and I did cause a bit of drama. It turns out the smoke detectors in the bathrooms are a bit sensitive, um, and even deodorant can set it off. So after brushing my teeth and then spraying some deodorant, I started to get change, and suddenly there was this loud banging on the door of the, uh, of the toilet. I really quickly threw on my clothes and went to open it up, and I found five cabin crew all waiting around the door. Apparently the captain had alerted them to a possible fire and they'd all immediately sprinted over there. Uh, thankfully they were very understanding um, and said it was no issue at all. But it was a bit embarrassing to have caused such a fuss. And then shortly after that I got back to the seat and we were coming into land. Overall I had a really great flight experience. There's obviously a lot of limitations of the old Club World seats, but despite those limitations we did have a really good time and I would gladly fly it again. After this flight, we spent some time in the Heathrow Lounge before connecting onto a short haul flight in business class up to Newcastle. And if you want to see that, click this video next.